So, I have two things that I want to talk about tonight. The panel was awesome. Lots of questions near and dear to my heart. As one of the people who at one time wrote a blog post for really the dying. <laughs> I have some thoughts on that. Um, all I would say is this. Uh, the world is not static. And uh, as the previous talk just mentioned about concurrency, there's a lot of stuff out there. And the only way that our computers are getting faster, since physics appears to have a limit, a lower limit, on how, uh, how small you can make things, is to make them concurrent. So concurrency is super important. One of the things that um, we talk about when we talk about concurrency is sharing state. In Ruby, we don't think about that a whole lot because Ruby has been primarily sequential. So when you go in and do things in Ruby, you don't think about uh, this, this object that I'm working on, is anybody else going to do something to this when I'm not looking? Or maybe when they're looking. Um, so concurrency tends to be difficult in Ruby. Ruby does not have built in, other than threads and queue, much support for doing multiple things at one time. Um, uh, concurrent Ruby and cellular are both great attempts at that, but they're not getting much support for, from the language itself. So one of the things that you see in Elixir, uh, for instance, or in Scala, or in Haskell, or uh, a lot of the other languages that go into this functional programming paradigm, you uh, see language support for managing state uh, in a way that allows you to exploit concurrency without um, these really nasty bugs where you get interleavings or the way things happen in a program out of order. So, you know, like, I don't even know if I can pull it out from memory, but, you know, um, where you take a sentence and sort of reorder it in a really humorous way, and that's what, you know, concurrency is. You get your effect before your cause and stuff like that. So, in Rubinius, uh, which is a, uh, started out as a Ruby implementation, I've been working on it now for 10 years. One of the things that I'm really interested in, one of the things that we've been building in Rubinius for a long time, is support for concurrency. So Rubinius has no global interpreter lock. You can do a lot of things at once. Uh, like Chuck found out 10,000 threads. Um, each of those threads has some, some uh, resources behind it. So unless you have a very uh, resource plentiful computer, uh, 10,000 threads is not going to help you. On a computer like this, an Apple, you are limited by the operating system to 2,500 threads. So good luck in even creating 10,000 of those threads. Um, so in Rubinius, I recently posted this. Rubinius takes the fun out of Ruby. And it's a little bit long reading because I build up to where I want to go. But the, the basic idea of it is that Rubinius is adding proper syntax, syntax support for functions. So functions are bits of computation that have a name or not. They can be anonymous. Um, they don't have an object that they're attached to. They're not attached to a thing that becomes the receiver. You don't say uh, my object dot foo and uh, you know, call that method on that object. They're functions. And the blog post builds up how this is fairly natural. We use puts and other things that are in kernel um, and included into object and are private. So you can't actually say a dot puts. You have to say puts. Um, they, they really do ignore their, their receiver. And they kind of wrap up something behind the scenes. They'll say, like, standard out dot puts, because standard out is an object that can um, that understands puts and can take the argument that you give it, turn it into a string if it's not, and, and write it out. The point isn't that it puts, wraps up standard out puts. So puts is not just standard out dot puts. It's a different thing. It does not do anything with its receiver. Um, it does dispatch to standard out puts, but it's really exactly like a function. So this post goes into explaining that and a bunch of other stuff, um, what sort of function, what's interesting about functions, but especially what's interesting about functions in contrast with objects. Objects, um, as I repeat a bunch of times in here, I'm not trying to show you anything in particular other than this is a long read. Um, <laughs> uh, the one thing that I'm trying to show you and I repeat multiple times is not, I'm not finding. Basically, the idea is that um, objects are for interaction and functions are for data. So functions, data, and types go really well together. Objects um, are sort of the flip side of that. They're the other side of the coin. Objects, you want to minimize the interface between two things so that the different rates of change, maybe it's somebody's API over there that you don't control. They change it, 
I change over here, they can still communicate because we've really limited how they communicate. Whereas functions, you want, if possible, a total function, something that's defined everywhere. So if you imagine the function f of x is equal to 1 over x, what if x is 0? In arithmetic, I know that's undefined. So if you ask f of x is equal to 1 over x, what is f of 0? It's like just blank stare. It's like I, I can't compute that, right? So in functions, a, a total function is really desirable. In objects, you want to you want to limit, limit that. In uh, functions and data types that help you define uh, the function, so you can you can say this is well defined. So that's what this post is about. Um, the syntax support is in Rubinius. It doesn't compile down to a function. However, it's not it's not it's not that hard to do that. Our bytecode compiler is written in Ruby. And if you're interested in digging into that, um, I would be more than happy to take you through that if someone were interested in that. So that's that's most of what I want to say about. The other thing is that I've been working on redesigning our website um, and uh, helping you find more things. There's a page in here about contributing. And since that question also came up, there's a bunch of stuff that you can do to contribute to this project. You can participate, pull requests, design help, copywriting, um, mentoring people, all kinds of things are, are really valued contributions. We've had 400 people um, contribute code, but there's far more than just writing code uh, that, can, that can help. You can sponsor employee contributions, you can sponsor the writing of the Rubinius book, <coughs> explaining how to build a virtual machine and language um, platform. You can sponsor interns and student projects, which are a great way to give people um, experience in working in a mature um, uh, project like this. You can fund the very specific Rubinius projects um, if there's something in here that would really help your company. Or you can invest in Rubinius um, and your company as well. So really trying to see uh, the project and the company that I founded around the project Rubinius Inc. as, a, as a really a partnership between businesses. If our business is benefiting your business and you're investing in your employees, you're benefiting us. If you're investing in us and we're helping your employees, you're benefiting so um, that's great. And then there's some other stuff here. Analyst is a product that I'm working on, and Compute is another um, idea. It's very much like Amazon Lab. So um, the question that I would have, and then book is the Rubinius book. The question that I have for people, if you go there and you read what I've written about Analyst or Compute, um, I would love it if you could take two to five minutes and send me an email and say, this is what I thought you were saying. Right? So check how I'm explaining this, and whether it's something that um, that you would pay for. And if you would pay for it, how much would you pay for it? And uh, if you would pay for it, would it be you paying for it, or would it be your company paying for it? Um, sort of how that would work. And uh, what you would really wish to see, if there's something that you're like, in my code every day, this is so painful, I would love to have this X, Y, Z. I would love to hear that. So, um, Brian at Rubinius, or you can look at our About page and find uh, more comments. You're welcome to send me a card at the email box or come visit me in that space. So that's all I have. Thank you very much.